Welcome to Jon Snow Labs Spark NLP video series. In this short tutorial, we're going to introduce the very basics of Spark NLP, annotators, annotations, and pipelines. So let's begin. Okay, so Spark NLP has basically a component called annotator. An annotator does something very specific in the NLP context. For example, tokenization, lemmatization, spell checking, and named entity recognition. Each annotator in Spark LP will do something very, very specific, and there are basically two types of annotators. Those that are trainable, and that those that are already trained. So, let's begin with the annotator naming convention. Here, we will begin with the approach ones. The annotators that have an approach on its name basically means that this annotator needs training or it is for training. If the annotator has the model name on it, it means it's already trained. And sometimes annotators like the tokenizer or the normalizer don't say neither approach or model. So this could be either uh, trainable or already trained. The difference is that these are not machine learning trainable. They just need some pre-processing or preparation in the cases that they are an approach or maybe they are already trained, which will contain the word model. So we'll see some examples later. Let's begin. In terms of examples, we have, for example, for part, per, for part of speech, the perception approach. Basically, the approach is extending from an estimator of SparkML and will have the fit function, which is basically the training function. Then, once the training is finished, the perceptron approach will become a perceptron model. This is already a SparkML transformer, and it's already trained and ready to transform datasets with predictions. These are usually the ones we save, we share, or we put in a pipeline for prediction. So, and then other example we have is the tokenizer. Usually if the tokenizer doesn't say, doesn't include the word model on it, it means it is the estimator um, equivalent. Basically it is ready for some pre-processing. For example, it will need to read from files or parse some dictionaries. Once the tokenizer is ready for prediction, it will become a tokenizer model. Some annotators don't even have a model and they are just as they are. In these cases, these are transformers and ready to predict. You don't have to remember everything by memory. Once you put all of this into the pipeline, in a pipeline you will need to call both fit and transform and will make sure that every annotator in the pipeline will become ready to transform alongside the pipeline. Again, we will see more examples later. Bear with me on this theory introduction. So, what properties does any annotator have in Spark NLP? Well, there are basically two properties, the inputs and the outputs. All annotators take inputs as column names from a data frame and have a single output, which is the output in the data frame they're going to transform. Alongside this, all annotators have additional params that are meant for fine-tuning or customizing its behavior. So, as we were saying, input types are multiple, can be one or more, and output, output type is usually a single one. The most important types of annotators are document, token, and chunk. These are basically more most important only because they are frequently used across annotators, and they have several importance in the NLP processing. Before jumping into examples, something very, very important to know is the structure of an annotation. The annotation is the output of every annotator. Annotations contain type, begin, end, result, metadata, and embeddings. Usually these are self-descriptive, so begin and end refer to where the annotation begins and ends relative to the original text. Result is usually the main outcome of the annotation. Metadata has other information about the annotation, 
and embeddings is mostly used by word embeddings annotators. So, for example, if we have a tokenizer, the tokenizer will output a type token. Then let's say we also have in the data frame the output of a sentence detector, which is type document. So if we want to use the perception approach or perception model, we need to use as input columns the output name of the columns of those previous annotations. So let's see how all of this makes sense. First, we do the necessary imports. Perfect. With these imports, we have everything or mostly everything that we need from Spark NLP in a basic overview. Now let's create some data frame called in a variable data. I'm going to put the sentence Peter is a very good person. I will rename the single column to text. We can show this. Perfect. Now let's say that for every Spark NLP task we will need document assembler. Why? Because document assembler is the only annotator that can read from raw text and convert it into a ready to, to do NLP annotation. So let's create a document assembler like this. So the document assembler is not a standard annotator. It has only one input column, it is of type string, and only one output column. So if we use it to transform, it should look like this. We use the document assembler to transform the data. Perfect. Now let's show the results. So here we see the our first annotation. We see a column called document and we have the very basics. The annotations come always in array form. In this case, we only have one element in the array, which is the document annotation containing the entire text, the begin and end, metadata is saying the index of the sentence, and the rest is empty. So now we can use the tokenizer. So let's create the tokenizer. Perfect. So the tokenizer is an estimator. It needs to call fit. So we need a document input which requires document assembler. So basically the tokenizer can fit from the document assembler's output data and transform it later. So we would call it like this. Let's call this tokenized data. Perfect. Now let's see the results. Okay, now things are starting to get messier. We now have the document assembler output and the token output. Let's only select the token column. Perfect. Now we basically see an array of annotations. Each annotation is a token type annotation. The begin and end will be to each begin and end of every token, which is Peter and is and a and very good, etc. So how do we make this a little bit more readable? Well, if we do select token.result, we will immediately access the result property of the token annotation, which is the core output of the annotation. 
perfect we are making progress now let's see how this usually becomes part of something bigger and that is where we use the SparkML pipelines so let's import them and now let's create our first pipeline so in our pipeline we will have to set stages and that is basically an array of all the components in that pipeline which will be the document and the tokenizer if I'm correct perfect now with the original data we can call a model pipeline fit on the original data even though there is no nothing to train here we'll convert the pipeline to a pipeline model perfect now our model is ready to transform let's transform the data so we get a data frame let's call this result and now we will see that result show will include all of the annotation columns so as you can see putting the annotators in the pipeline solves everything for us and we don't have to think about fitting and transforming and doing it step by step the pipeline will do everything for us a small trick is also know that the pipelines can contain embedded pipelines inside and you can grow pipelines as complex as you would like them to be so this is the basics on annotations and annotators in spark lp so hope this has been useful for you and stay tuned for more videos bye bye